Hey guys, this is Eckhart Sletter. Hello and welcome to another Star Wars lore episode. Last week I did a quick video on how the prequels changed the story behind the Clone Wars. Today I've got something similar, another quick Star Wars Legends lore video exploring the backstory of the galaxy's most famous bounty hunter before it was revealed in the prequels that he's actually a clone. There are some pretty serious differences. Instead of being the clone of a bounty hunter, in his early life, he worked as a lawman on a remote planet in the Outer Rim. Because of that, he has an intense sense of justice, which I don't think that we see in the canon. He has a devotion to order and living a pure life. I'll explain more of this as I go through the video. All of today's information comes from The Last One Standing, the tale of Boba Fett from The Tales of the Bounty Hunter short story collection. The events of this short story span over 30 years, with the first bit taking place 12 years before the Battle of Yavin and the ending taking place 19 years after the Battle of Yavin. As I said, in these stories we learn of the puritanical, highly law-minded Boba Fett, which we don't really see to the same degree in the rest of Star Wars Legends, and certainly not in Star Wars canon. The story starts off as we learn about journeyman protector Jester Muriel. Jester, who he would soon learn would grow up to become Boba Fett, says there's no greater good than justice, and only if law serves justice is a good law. It is said correctly that law exists not for the just, but for the unjust, for the just carry the law in their hearts and do not need to call it from afar. We would see an adherence to Mandalorian code and honor and justice throughout Boba Fett's appearances in the expanded universe, but arguably not to the same degree that we do in this short story. So we've learned that Boba Fett is a lawman on an outer rim planet. We also learn that he's being kicked out of the service for murdering one of his colleagues. It seems like the guy deserves it, we don't get specifics, but Boba did not have proper authorization, there was no trial. He basically murders him in cold blood, and this is a theme we see throughout the short story. Boba Fett seeing himself as an arbiter of justice. Clearly this stint in Boba's life doesn't appear in the rest of continuity. Some people have also argued that the ages are a little bit wrong here, however Boba Fett was always held to be born around 30 years before the Battle of Yavin. With this being 12 years before the Battle of Yavin, that would put him at about 18 or 19, that seems about right to me. In the official continuity, for those wondering, Boba Fett becomes a full time bounty hunter when he's still in his very early teens. In this story, there's also no mention of Boba Fett being a Mandalorian, although Mandalorian body armor in particular is mentioned, it's just something that Boba Fett seems to have acquired somehow. Later we have a time jump which sees Boba Fett tracking a target on a distant world. There he encounters for the first time, albeit only from a distance, Han Solo. Han has somehow gotten himself involved in a four-way gladiatorial fist fighting match. We later learn that he actually wins this match and that Boba is incredibly impressed with his speed and determination. In this part we also see some of Boba's puritanical side. He heavily, heavily criticizes someone for discussing spice, which in the Star Wars universe is a form of drug, and to the point where he's almost violent against them. We then have a time jump to the planet of Hoth, where Boba Fett watches the Imperial fleet jump too close to the planet and alert the rebel forces. He tracks the Millennium Falcon after Han and the crew escape from Hoth, but refuses to follow them into the asteroid belt, saying no bounty is worth your life. Later he would meet Darth Vader as we see in The Empire Strikes Back, and then eventually go on, of course, to capture Han Solo. We learn a few things in this part. First, that he's been paid handsomely by the Empire and by Jabba, to such a degree that he's probably the most famous bounty hunter in the galaxy. He also has like a five minute idle conversation with an Imperial officer, which he says is his longest one in years. The topic of that conversation, by the way, Han Solo. Next we have Boba Fett at Jabba's palace, and here we have a surprisingly adult scene. Jabba offers either a scantily clad or completely naked Princess Leia to Boba Fett as like a sex slave for the night. Boba tells Leia to cover up and that he's not going to touch her, saying that sex before marriage is immoral. For what it's worth, Leia says yeah, so is rape. Fett agrees with this and the two share a night together in the bedroom without any further contact. There Boba reflects on the fact that he has never even held a woman and that as he grows older, his desire to do so lessens. However, it should be noted that in Star Wars Legends, Boba Fett would actually have a child at some point. Leia also tries to get Boba Fett to turn to the Rebellion, and there they have an interesting conversation. Boba basically says that he would never join the Rebellion because they rose up against the legally authorized government. He also says that the Emperor has the right to destroy anyone who rises up against the galaxy because that threatens the social order. Again, we see his very authoritarian, very harsh and brutal 
justice-driven attitude. He then calls Han Solo an evil man for running Spice, because Spice is illegal, it's a euphoric, it alters moods, and the use of it leads to worse substances, and a man who will run Spice will run anything. Throughout this, there's kind of an undertone that there's something more going on here. Whether he has some sort of interaction with Spice in his past, or one of his family members does, or perhaps that's why he killed the other officer. We don't really know, but it is there in the background. Later we get to the final time period, 19 years after the Battle of Yavin. At this point, Boba Fett is still feeling the effects of his injury by the Sarlacc. He's got various serious forms of cancer, he's lost a leg, and he's infertile. Again, some of this is not consistent with his appearances in the rest of Star Wars Legends. Those are basically most of the contradictions or differences between Boba Fett's backstory or later adventures in this short story and in the rest of continuity. I'm not going to ruin the rest of it, but Luke Skywalker makes an appearance and the story ends with an armed confrontation between Han Solo and Boba Fett. Which one of them survives? Well, you'll just have to read to find out. Anyways guys, that's all for today's Star Wars lore video. This was a little shorter than usual, but I hope you guys enjoyed it nonetheless. If you guys have any suggestions for future videos, feel free to leave in the comments. Also, let me know what you thought of this one. Anyway, thank you so much for watching guys. As always, this has been Eckhart's Ladder. May the Force be with you.